What's going on everyone? ODC here and I'm back with another action figure review. Today's review we're going to take a look at the Mythic Legions, long awaited Mythic Legions. This is Afarius. Afarius? Afarius, I believe it's Afarius. Um, maybe I'm saying it wrong. I have a hard time with these, these Mythic Legions, so please, please grant me some sort of leeway here. Um, <laughs> um, but this was a long awaited figure. I, I've been waiting, what, almost two years to get this figure. Um, I do have other figures from the wave. Um, and I also have some of the, the um, as you've seen in some of my size comparisons, I have some of the army builder wave figures as well. Um, I, I plan on getting to all these reviews. I wanted to start specifically with this one because of how unique he is. He is large. He is a very large character. Um, he is the first of his kind that we have in action figure form. This, when I, as soon as I saw this, between, between he, him and that moose, I had to get both. Um, here he is with a Motu Classics body with lion -O. And he is large, like he is huge. He dwarfs him easily. Here's a SH Figure Arts for a quick size comparison. There's Common Rider Black. They run a little bit smaller, especially this is an, a much older figure, but you kind of get my drift here as far as how large he actually is. Um, here's a NECA figure. Let's get a NECA, we'll get a Predator in here. We'll get a newer Predator, how's that? We'll get the newest wonderful awesome ultimate stalker uh predator in here which i'm going to be doing his review soon he's on a lot the larger uh body like here's a regular neck of humanoid figure right here and the defenders of the earth um phantom right there and he runs around seven inches tall and he's about eight inches tall so um you can definitely see the, the largeness of the figure, and I get it. These figures do run at a premium, and especially if you're, you don't, you miss out on the pre-orders or the Kickstarters or whatever, um, these figures run a little bit less for those, but when you're buying them from Big Bad Toy Store, it's like 60 to 70, almost $80 for some figures. Like the Moose, I think on Big Bad Toy Store, which is sold out now, again, um, is around 80 bucks just for a Moose. You know, like that's that's an expensive piece right there. That, that That is not a garden variety piece. Now, granted, this is coming from a smaller company. Get it. Not trying to make excuses and I'm not trying to point the finger. But when you are paying for a premium figure, I would expect premium articulation range of motion. So we can we can small company this and small company that and we can premium figure this and premium figure that. But at the end of the day, they have to be able to function in a way that I would expect a figure to function in 2022. Um, and you can see this in toy lines all the time. They, they upgrade articulation, range of motion, stuff like that. You see it with Marvel Legends, for God's sake. You've seen it with uh, the G.I. Joe Classifieds line, which is a great line. And you've even seen it in some NECA figures. NECA figures have come a long way with their evolution. Um, so I'm hoping, uh, uh, crossing my figures out in for the future of Mythic Legions, that they do instill some new articulated points on some of these, especially the male bodies, I think, need it the most, more so than the female bodies. Um, same thing with the girthiness of these weapons. Some of these weapons are excessively too large for the figure's hands, and they stretch the hands out, and then the figures can't really hold them. And we've seen that with a lot of the Wave 2 figures with the females and their smaller hands, and they just can't hold their mage staff or magical staff, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a very frustrating thing. Um, I've had more female figures from Mythic Legions fall off my shelf um, whether it's loose ankles or the mage staff just weighing them down, they can't hold it properly. It's, it is becoming an issue, um, with age. So, uh, maybe I'll do a full retrospective of the earlier waves and, um, I don't have too many issues with wave one figures though. I'll say that it's mostly the females. 
have been just knocking shit over all constantly. Okay, so for uh, uh, Afarius here, he is a huge figure. Um, he has um, really cool articulated points here. Um, I am noticing a, just a couple things as far as uh, paint issues go. Obviously, the tail portion on the hinge, and I've literally had this not even 24 hours, but you could see the tail was like this in packaging, and once I articulated it, I noticed that the tail hinge was not painted. That's an unfortunate thing. It's not a huge deal breaker, but I would have preferred if that was painted. I can go and paint it myself. I understand that. But, you know, it's just something I have to point out. That's the point of a review is to point these things out. Um, the body of the horse, we've seen it before. Um, I'm not sure if this is the exact same horse. I don't own any of the Mythic Legion's horses, unfortunately. But um, I do plan on getting the moose body, and I think that might not be a reused body, but we'll wait and see once I get him. Um, the, uh, the tail of the horse looks really nice, beautifully sculpted with some nice detail going throughout the, the uh, tail of the horse. Um, it looks very, very nice. Um, this is a member of Xylona's flock as well, which I always welcome, Xylona's flock. Um, creatures they look fantastic this guy is very very tall extremely tall um <laughs> he does have lots of different points of articulation so i think what i'll do is i'll just start off by going through articulation we'll get this trident out of his hand and then we'll go through all the other fun little things that he's got to offer as well um so i'm just going to start top to bottom and you have to kind of bear with me here as i am kind of leaning over my camera and i can't see into the camera as i'm doing this so bear with me here um his head is on a ball joint it, you can't really get any range of motion out of the head i'm just going to tell you right now due to the wonderful beautiful sculpt of the hair now where the sculpt of the hair is wonderful and beautifully done and perfectly paint shaded where it needs to be um, you can't really get any range of motion out of the head. The head is the the head will get you about this much, and you don't want to push it because you, there is a ball peg on there, and you don't want to snap that ball peg off. So this is about what you're gonna get out of the head. No jive turkeys. There's no gobbles available. Um, we have the arms, which will go up about that far. You can, I believe, you can take. Can you take the pauldrons off? I think you can. They're just pegged into the back. And this is a, I, th I believe this might be a, either a wave one or a, maybe a, a newer upper torso, but it looks like there are pegs in the back for like a wings. If you want to give them wings too or something, do something crazy like that. I'm not sure why you would want to do that, but you can. Um, but the arm goes up about that far. That's maxed out right there. Um, the arm goes down, you can swivel it forward all the way up you can swivel it back um trying to get these pauldrons these pauldrons are very bulky and they do, they do get in the way quite a bit of the articulation um he does have the ball peg he's just kind of a ball peg on top of the horse torso and let's see if i can pop this torso off pop that off and pop this off and there you have the horse's head's body so this would be the initial horse's body um, that we would get and then he is just a kind of a regular um i don't know if he's a 1.0 body i'll have to double check here because i actually do have a 1.0 body here and i think he's a different torso entirely um i believe he is maybe uh, yeah that looks very similar but i think it is different and this one is also kind of like a textured a little bit different from the wave one body so this is definitely a different torso the head looks gorgeous i love this head sculpt it, it really does look like he's some sort of like general or leader or something um i haven't read up about him yet i know it's on the card but um he looks like he's definitely in charge of something here um i love the paint shading also going throughout the torso here it's kind of like a like a reddish brown um, it looks really good and it kind of fluctuates through all the paint shading even on his back I mean even to the point of where you might not even see some of this paint shading 
it does exist and it is there. This pauldron starting to pop off a little bit there. Uh, but it looks really good. Um, let me actually go ahead and pop one of these pauldrons off just so you can see. He's got like a little bit of almost like, um, I shouldn't say scaling, but uh, it's almost like leopard or like some sort of like animal print going down his neck to his shoulder. Um, that's really cool. I love that little bit of subtlety as far as the aesthetic goes for the figure. Um, I, these pauldrons are, like I said, are an all new sculpt. Um, they are large and this is some really nice sculpt work for the pauldron and everything. I've never had one issue with any of their sculpt. Um, some of their paint could do, be a little bit better, but, um, as far as, you know, quality control and rubbing off and kind of cracking, but, um, the sculpt work on them are fantastic. Um, Eric Treadway does a really good job with the sculpt of these characters and how unique they do look. So kudos to them on that. And I've never had an issue with any of the sculpt on them. Um, the gauntlets are a newer gauntlet. They are larger. Um, he does have bare hands here, as you can see. He doesn't come with any extra hands or anything like that. Um, here is the armored piece for kind of like the, the neck part <laughs> of the horse, but uh, the lower torso part of, um, of the character. It's got um, like a metallic green here, and then we got some browns. Uh, we've got some silver for the little um, armored rivet pieces. And then we have a nice little light um, earth tone right here for uh, the mesh. And you can see it's like some sort of like meshy material right there. It looks really good. And then we have a, like a lighter, like almost like a gold for the trim. So that looks really good. And that just plugs right into the neck piece of him right there. So uh, for the, now this is an all new sculpt, I believe from the back part. Um, this is also an all new sculpt for this wave. Um, as far as from what we've seen, we've seen this with Valak and we've seen this with a couple others for this wave. But um, I really do like the sculpt and he's kind of almost got like a saddle piece right here for armor uh, to protect the rest of his neck like Wu-Tang Clan says protect your neck um, but yeah this is an all new sculpted piece we've got some kind of like uh, I don't even know how to how to name this material but you, you feel it usually on thicker armored pieces that need some flexibility um, I don't know how to explain it almost like a mesh like a thick really thick Carhartt mesh type armor piece but then we've got some leather painted right here and it feels like like a leather um same thing for down here over here for the uh, metallic green looks really good just just a lovely painted and sculpted um armor pieces for him and i love that he's got even little um little like pouches and stuff like that um, he does have kind of like a belt loop here, so you can put a sword through there if you needed to. There's like a little sword loop right there, if you can see that. Um, so there's some thought process on some of these newer armor pieces, which I definitely, definitely was looking forward to. And let's just pop this torso back on there, and you'll feel a little pop. I have noticed, though, that um, when you try to get him kind of fully upright, there is some gapping issue here, but kind of have to play with the, the armor here to get that to work. Um, the rest of the articulation, he does have, and I know I kind of went into the how things work there and went a little bit off on a tangent, but um, so the rest of the articulation, the we do have, like I said, uh, there's no bicep swivel because this is like, that's typical of, of Mythic Legions. They just don't have that. That's because they have a single bend at the elbow and they have a swivel at the elbow. So I don't mind the elbow swivels. Those don't bother me as opposed to a bicep swivel. Same thing with a, uh, I don't need an ab crunch if I have a diaphragm joint, uh, which we don't have either for them. They, we never really have. They kind of have just like a ball jointed torso so you can kind of wiggle him around and twist him if you need to um so that's always been a thing with them um but we also have a swivel for the gauntlet 
We have a swivel for the wrist and we have a lateral hinge joint for each wrist. So it can go back and forth like that on both sides. Um, as far as the legs go, the legs have hinges right there. They can go forward, they can go back a little bit. Um, you can bend them. I'm gonna try and get this to bend. If it's showing me any sort of, there we go. We'll just use this leg. Um, so we'll go like this. So you can get him kind of like in a neighing or like a, like a, like a, like he's, <laughs> like he's kicking out like that. He has a swivel at the knee as well. So a single bend at the knee. It's about 90 degrees right there, so decently done. And then we have a swivel at that um, that knee as well. We also have a hinge joint at the foot, which that one's kind of frozen. So we'll work with this one. And you can get it to go out a little bit. So however you need that to work. With the back legs, the back legs work a little bit different. They're kind of on like a ball. I want to say almost like a ball joint. Yeah, they're on a pretty much like a ball joint where they can kick out. So if you need to get him into like a power stance or something like that, maybe he's power stancing for some sort of like launching or something like he's going to launch his spear or something like that. Or he's getting back to getting ready to rear his uh, leg up and kick someone. Um, but you do have a hinge here on the back leg and it can go all the way up just like so. Um, you can swivel back and forth with the top of the hip for the rear, and that's how you can kick back. Um, you can also pivot in and out. You can kick the knee forward, which, there we go. Let's get that forward. That's a little bit unnatural right there, but uh, you can also swivel back a little bit. It does have a swivel at the knee, and we do have a hinge joint at the ankle as well so i'm seeing paint falling off of him already as far as like some yellow paint but that's essentially his articulation and range of motion as far as he goes now he obviously was going to be a lot more limited just because he is what he is um he's like popeye i are who i are i is who i is i am who i am uh, all of those <laughs> but um but yeah, I, I think he's got what he needs. Um, I would have liked a little bit better range of motion in the head, but it's, it's fine for now. Um, this is, like I said, the first figure of its kind here. Um, he can hold his weapons. He, we have this trident here, which is like a kind of like a gold and a, like that metallic green that he's kind of got going throughout his armor. He also comes with a quiver, um, nice brown, um, paint for the like leather portion and we got some gold trim going throughout the quiver and then we have some green metallic for the feathers on the arrows um, and we've seen this quiver before it was pretty much around during wave two um, you can uh, peg this right on or kind of clip it right on to his belt right there just like so so if you want to have him with his, instead of his trident, you can have him with his bow. And this is the much larger bow that we've seen with, that was uh, around with wave two. Um, and you can just kind of pop it right into his hand here, like a so. And now he is ready for some archery, if you need him to. Um, get his arm up, let's get his head over. I, and this is where I really think he would, uh, benefit from some sort of better range of motion in the head is that you can't really get him to look in a archery pose. Um, and I think a lot of that also has to do with the lack of butterfly joints here. Um, and I almost want to say some of the shortness of the arms. I noticed a, the, a lot of Mythic Legion since wave one have had shorter arms. So, but he also comes with a sword as well. And this is a sword that's been reused since uh, wave two. Um, and we've seen it with a lot of the vampire um, clans and stuff like that. Some of the um, elf clans as well. And he can hold it just fine in his hand if you want to have him hold it. There you go. And you can have him hold both if you want. Or you can have him with his bow off let's get that bow off of there let's be gentle about it too there we go um, you can strap it 
around. I mean, you will kind of be stretching out that string. I don't know if I'd, I'd want to do that for too long of a time because then you're going to stretch the string out to the point of it's just going to be loose. Um, I kind of always think of strings like a, like a WWE Elite ring, like when those ropes start drooping, you know. But he can hold his sword fine. Uh, he can hold literally everything if you want to have him hold everything and just kind of stand there fully armed to the teeth. But I think it would have been a really cool new design to add to this type of character is if he had some sort of saddle right here, which wasn't wouldn't be a saddle, but it'd be something where you can like store his weapons on. Maybe not necessarily the trident, but the, the bow, um, I feel like would be a nice thing to to put here or maybe going like that on him um or also especially the sword like you could have the sword in like some sort of like saddle sheath right here for him because obviously he's got nowhere else to really put it unless he's holding it constantly um and even if you put it on the belt here it's going to be poking into the side of the horse which it doesn't look all of that natural and it doesn't naturally sit into his um I guess sheath and you can't even get it through the sheath holster which is right there because the blade is just a very unique thicker blade um, it just simply won't go through it kind of sits like that <laughs> and that just doesn't look right so I thought I, I would think like it would be really cool if they maybe with some future figures in the way if you're going to do some more of these type of characters to give them some sort of like saddle maybe that you can clip on and just have some extra weapon storage for them. I think that would make the most sense. But I think for me, I'm going to go with the trident for him. I think it makes a lot uh, of sense. It's a throwing weapon and also a defense and offensive weapon. So I think that makes the most sense for me with him. And um, I don't know. I might end up changing this trident out for maybe some sort of spear tip or something like that. But... Um, it would be really nice to also have him with his bow because I think the bow and the quiver make perfect sense for the character too. Maybe not so much the sword. Um, but uh, yeah, he is a beautiful looking figure and um, I'm not, I mean, I'm not really sure what else to say. Um, the paint on him looks fantastic. Um, I did have some issues, like I said, some paint coming off. It's not nearly as bad as wave one. So just to give you a frame of reference, head is absolutely fantastic um it is gorgeous head um i love this kind of like a it's like a metallic green but it looks like leaves um are part of his kind of like crown right here um and i did want to spend a little bit of time just kind of talking about this head because it looks so damn good and he looks so heroic and um so much like a like a just like a leader like this is this is the type of guy that is going to lead you into battle i love the elf kind of our fairy elf type ears that we have here and also the spots on his forehead looks really good the wideness of his nose he looks like he is some sort of hybrid type character the head fits with the body which then fits with the lower torso which would be the horse body I just think it was very well thought out and it looks really good. The eyes don't have any pupils, which I don't really think they need to, especially with this type of character. The beard is well sculpted. I'm a bearded man myself, so I know a good beard when I see one and trust me, it's a good cool beard. Uh, he's got he's got these kind of like beard clasps on there and those look really good. He's got braided beard going on the side. Looks really cool. On the back part of his hair, like I said, this is where the intricacy of the sculpt really shines, I think. Um, you've got the beautiful sculpt for the, the front of the face, and then you've got the back of the head, which is just, just wonderfully, I guess, complex and intertwined with a lot of these braids and just the hair kind of overlapping each other. It looks really good. You've got some gold um, kind of hair ties or clasps for the hair. We've got uh, another one up here that's wonderfully painted right there. And I love that they have these like little braids right here kind of going through the clasp for the hair and then you can kind of see it continuing throughout that. 
Um, and like I said, there's a right amount of paint shading going throughout here um, for the hair. Um, it's not overdone. It's like the right perfect amount. And that's where I think the Four Horsemen really shine is not just in their sculpt, but in their paint detail. Their paint detail is top notch. I don't think anybody can compete with their paint detail um, other than maybe a McFarlane. All right, let's do a, we'll get into a posing segment here. Um, this knee, okay, this knee started to bend a little bit more. Okay, so maybe he's getting, let's get him into some sort of like pose here. Let's see how well he can actually pose as far as that goes. He looks more like he's got a Clydesdale lower body. Um, but these horse bodies look really great. And this is actually my first horse body, so... Um, we'll get this up and we'll get him into kind of like a throwing a spear pose or something like that. I just wish this head could move a little bit more so we can get a little bit more like he's kind of rearing back here. And this is the other problem with <laughs> these portraits. They just don't want to, they don't want to, <laughs> you know, and then the head doesn't want to move. So you can't really get him. I'm trying to get him into a hiking back and rearing up and you know we'll spread these legs out like he's kind of power stancing here i just wish the head could turn to the left his left um about 40 degrees uh or maybe 30 degrees to the left <laughs> but he, there's not there's really no movement out of this head and it's bumping into the pauldron as well so uh, not the best as far as like a, a, a posable figure but it, you got to understand the limitations that we are dealing with here. So I kind of get it. Um, I still think this figure specifically would have really benefited from butterfly joints. And um, maybe, I mean, you can pop the pauldrons off. You can definitely pop these off and get this. So let me get this pauldron off here. It's being a little stubborn. There we go. You have to pop that off and then you can get him to rear up a little bit more and then you have more movement in the head. So if you take the pauldron off, you can get him to, to look like he's supposed to. Maybe you can leave one on, um, but if you do want to take both off, you'll get a lot better range of motion, way more articulation in that body as far as that goes. So let's get him power stanced up here. and There you go. That's, I want to say, much much more improved as far as that goes. So these pauldrons are definitely the culprit as far as, you know, the hindering of articulation. But then again, you won't be able to have the pauldrons on there if you want to get him into these type of poses. So it's give or take there, but uh, you can move the head at least with the pauldrons off. So that's a good thing. That's a, a plus. Um, I don't know, final thoughts on the figure. Um, I would say, you know, for how unique he is, he's definitely, I would give him a two thumbs up. And the reason why I'm giving him a two thumbs up, the sculpt on him is fantastic. The paint on him is very well done. Um, I don't, like I said, I only pointed out like, what was it? Two things. Like there's some paint chipping off, but it wasn't really anything to even be noticed. Um, the tail and that's it. Um, I don't really have too many other issues as far as anything else goes. Um, I don't have any quality control concerns as far as any breakage issues. I never really have. I haven't had one Mythic Legion break on me. Thank God. Knock on wood. Um, but I love the accessories he does come with. Um, the Trident, I think, is the one I'm going to go with as far as his weapon of choice. Um, I love the bow. I love the quiver. And the sword is a nice little touch as well. I love these new pauldrons, but trying to, like I said, trying to get him articulated with these pauldrons on is, is not going to work. Um, like I said, maybe you can go with just one pauldron here. So he's got like one side that's kind of armored up. But uh, with both of these, he's going to just be kind of standing there holding his weapon. That's about it in a neutral pose. I Like I said, I would stick with without the pauldrons on. Or like I said, maybe just pop one on and call it a day. And there you go. Um, but this is this might actually be how I have him posed. He, he, looks, he looks menacing. He looks heroic. He looks the part. 
and uh, I really do like this figure quite a bit. Um, I like that the legs can kind of stick outward. I love the kind of power stance that you get in the back. It's almost like creating a tripod if you want to get his leg to rear up a little bit. Um, so I do love that. I love the hinges on him. I think the articulation for the horse body itself is absolutely stunning. Um, and uh, that's why I think I'm giving it going with the two thumbs up here. He is a larger deluxe figure. He comes in a larger deluxe box, which I'm, I'm not going to really show. I mean, it just doesn't really take put make any make anything about the figure that much better. It's a box with really good artwork on it. Don't get me wrong. Um, it does have his bio on the side. Um, I'm hoping in the future that they will include bios inside the boxes, maybe separately. So maybe we can put the bios with the figures, kind of how um, Valiverse does. But, uh, you know, I, you, you can't have everything, can you? Um, this looks good, solid figure, and I would definitely recommend him um, for his uniqueness alone. Um, even if we're talking about just unique aesthetic, um, I would definitely say go pick him up. And if you, you missed out, um, it might be a little bit harder to get your hands on. Um, I don't know how the second, the secondary market with Mythic Legions is ridiculous. I, oh God, I can't even imagine. I pray for those people trying to track these down on the secondary markets because it's a rough go. Um, so, but those of you who did pre-order, um, I would say, I think you're going to really enjoy this one. I think this might be the highlight of the wave. I think this is the highlight. Um, the, what was it? The vampire ogre. It, it, he's really cool and all, but I think this is the stunning piece from the wave. So with that being said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, and I'll see you guys on the flip side.